McDermott, an RP Applications Engineer and Stratus Certified CSE with Go Engineer. In this short video, I'd like to illustrate a quick tip used to correct a recurring issue with Fortis material canisters concerning the material feed using the thumb wheel. This thumb wheel issue involves a small metal spring clip that needs to be bent slightly to allow the rubber covered wheel to rotate and feed the model or support materials. It is especially important to keep the wheel from reversing and allowing the material to slip back inside the canister. Let's determine what we need to complete the repairs. Obviously the canister, a small Phillips screwdriver, number one preferred, thin needle nose pliers, some side cutters to cut and trim the filament material. Remember to always keep the canister in the vertical position when working with it to avoid cross-wound issues. It is first necessary to remove the anti-rotation plug on the side of the canister from under the aluminum foil, then resealing that foil tightly to prevent moisture issues with the materials. First open the thumb wheel door, then notice the rectangular orange foam gasket brake pad that is to be removed during the process of loading the canister into the material bay. Note, do not remove it at this time. Leave it in its pocket on the inside of the thumb wheel door. Double sided tape holds it in place. Notice the black rubber around the thumb wheel that is used to provide friction for both your thumb and the film material. Above the thumb wheel is a small metal spring clip. We then remove the filament cap from the top sealing position. Notice it has an orange foam seal. We then place it in the stowed position located at the lower front of the canister snout. Here is an extremely important note. Take great care to ensure that the film material does not slip back down inside the canister. Here as you can see, I attempt three times to use my thumb to try to rotate the wheel downward on the front face. That is supposed to cause the black rubber to rub against the filament on the rear of the wheel. However, in this case, the incorrectly bent metal spring clip is preventing the wheel from turning so it fails to let the material feed out. Now you can see I have removed the culprit, the metal spring clip, and holding it with pliers. It's this clip that restrains the rubber covered thumb wheel with the tiny hook bent at the bottom of the clip's arm. The problem is that this clip is not bent enough at the upper portion and as a result when screwed down tightly onto the canister nose housing it produces increased pressure on the black rubber material on the wheel. It is often so much pressure that sometimes it grips the rubber, digs in, and if you use a great deal of force trying to thumb wheel the material out of the canister, it can slide off to one side and even cut and tear the rubber, causing it to actually break and come loose from the wheel. This renders the thumb wheel and the canister totally useless, requiring it to be returned to Stratasys. So how to quickly correct this issue? First, using a Phillips screwdriver, remove the two small screws that hold the metal spring clip in place. With needle nose pliers, remove the metal spring clip from its location, just above and slightly behind the thumb wheel area. You'll now see the filament behind the thumb wheel as I lift the thumb wheel up and down, only for illustration purposes. It is this metal spring clip that is not bent enough rearward and exerts too much force on the rubber and won't allow the wheel to turn and stops material filament from exiting the canister. This is what this video illustrates, how to bend that clip slightly rearward and also still enough pressure to keep the thumb wheel from rolling backwards. Rolling backwards is a major issue since the filament can slip back inside the canister and be lost, requiring it to be returned to Stratasys as unusable. Now you can see a comparison of how the original factory bend looks like alongside of the one I just adjusted. I have used the double-sided tape on the brake pad to hold both examples in place for reference. 
The factory angle is the upper clip shown and the adjusted clip is the lower one, so you can see them side by side. Notice the major difference in these two metal spring clip angles. Also notice that the short bend or hook at the bottom of end of the clips. That is what actually catches on the black rubber material on the wheel. Once we have bent this tab from its current factory angle of approximately 130 to 135 degrees to a more useful angle of approximately 95 to 100 degrees, we simply replace it along with two screws that hold it in place. The bending process is only an approximation and may need to be reseated since it is mostly a by-feel adjustment. Reassemble by simply reversing the disassembly process already shown to reinsert the clip and the two screws after bending the metal spring clip using the needle nose pliers and your thumb. After replacing the adjusted metal spring clip, simply test it by pressing in and rolling downward with your thumb in one single motion to ensure that the filament will feed up and out of the canister. As you can see now, this has indeed corrected this issue and will allow the material to feed properly. Once adjusted, simply close the thumb wheel door and clip off the excess filament with the side cutters to the appropriate height, approximately 1 quarter to 3 16th exposed and you are now ready to load your material into your material bay for printing. This concludes this quick instruction tip on how to correct the Fortis Material Canister's material feeding issue. Thank you for watching this video and we hope this helps. Once again, I'm David McDermott with Go Engineer and have a great day. Thank you.